Hi, today we're talking about Jane Mansfield, the actress who died in 1967 at the age of 34. Jane Mansfield was an American movie star, stage star and singer. She was one of the blonde bombshells of the 1950s and 60s with an hourglass figure of 40, 21, 35. Jane was born Vera Jane Palmer on the 19th of April, 1933 in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. She was the only child of attorney Herbert William Palmer and Vera Jeffrey. Her father was of English and German descent and her mother was of English descent. In her early childhood, she lived in Phillipsburg in New Jersey. In 1936, her father died of a heart attack. So that would have made her around three years old. That's very sad, isn't it? In 1939, her mum married sales engineer Harry Lawrence Pierce, and the family lived in Dallas, Texas. She took her stepfather's name and was known as Vera Jane Pierce. While she was in high school, she studied the viola, violin, and piano. She spoke five languages, English, French, Spanish, German, and Italian. Jane apparently had an IQ of 149, but other reports state it was higher than that. When she was 17 years old, she married Paul Mansfield and had her first child, a daughter whom she named Jane Marie Mansfield. Jane wanted to be an actress and started taking acting classes. She studied acting at the University of Texas at Austin. She also had Baruch Lumet as an acting teacher, the father of director Sidney Lumet. She lived at Camp Gordon in Georgia, a US Army training facility for a year when Paul served in the Korean War as a United States Army Reservist. She found work as a model and also won lots of beauty pageants. Some of the titles were Miss Photo Flash, Miss Electric Switch, Gas Station Queen, Miss Magnesium Lamp, Miss Fire Prevention Week, and Miss 100% Pure Maple Syrup. She refused the title of Miss Roquefort Cheese as she didn't like the sound of it. As well as the pageant, she was acting on stage in things like Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman. To boost her career, Jane executed her first publicity stunt. She attended a press junket in 1955 for Howard Hughes's movie, Underwater. She wore a red lame swimsuit that was purposely too small for her, dived into a pool and her top came off. All the pressmen went wild and took lots of pictures. This led to her appearing in Hugh Hefner's Playboy magazine, which furthered her career. Her first movie part was in Female Jungle in 1955. She appeared on Broadway in the play Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter, which also starred Walter Matthau and Orson Bean. She won a Theatre World Award for the play in 1956. She got a contract with 20th Century Fox. The movie that made her into a star was The Girl Can't Help It in 1956. The movie has lots of music stars in it. Jean Vincent, Eddie Cochran, Fats Domino, The Platters and Little Richard. It was a huge success. She won the Golden Globe for New Star of the Year in 1957. Jane was cast in the movie version of Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter which also starred Tony Randall and Joan Blondell. Another success was the movie The Sheriff of Fractured Jaw in 1958 with Kenneth Moore. As well as being in American movies, she toured around performing in nightclub acts and appeared in European films. She was persuaded to be the first mainstream American actress to appear nude in a lead role in the movie Promises Promises in 1963. Her last role in film was in a cameo part in the movie A Guide for the Married Man, a comedy that starred Walter Matthau and Terry Thomas. Jane did a lot of television work also, such as Burke's Law, Craft Mystery Theatre and Alfred Hitchcock Presents. She did game shows such as Down You Go, which was similar to The Hangman Game, where she was a regular panellist, and The Match Game, The Ed Sullivan Show, 
and What's My Line, where she appeared as the mystery guest. She sometimes played the piano or violin during her television appearances. She would stage numerous publicity stunts where her dress would fall down or her upper body was exposed somehow. People got tired of the attention-seeking behaviour. She met her second husband, Hungarian actor and bodybuilder Nicky Hargate, when he was performing in Mae West's show in the Latin Quarter nightclub in New York in 1956. He had won the title of Mr Universe in 1955. Jane was asked what she would like and she replied, I'll have a steak and that man on the left. He was in four of her films, including Will Success Spoil Brock Hunter and Promises Promises. They performed in touring stage shows where he would lift her up and whirl her around. After her divorce from Paul, she married Mickey in 1958. They had three children, Mickey Halkate Jr., Zoltan and Mariska. Here they are with their first child, Mickey Jr. She adopted the colour pink as her signature colour and when she was married to Mickey Hegate they lived in a Mediterranean style mansion on Sunset Boulevard that was known as the Pink Palace because Jane had it painted that colour. It was home to her children and her numerous pets. It had originally been owned by singer and actor Rudy Valley and was located at 10100 Sunset Boulevard in Holmby Hills, Los Angeles. It had pink shag carpeting on the walls. Mickey built an outside heart-shaped swimming pool that had I love you Janie written on the bottom of it. They ended up divorcing. Her third husband was director Matt Kimber whose real name was Matteo Ottaviano. She had met him when he was the director for the stage production of Bus Stop in New York which she was starring in. They married in 1964 but separated in 1965. They had one son, Antonio Raphael Ataviano, otherwise known as Tony Kimber. Here she is with all of her children and Matt Kimber. In 1966, Jane started living with her attorney, Sam Brody. This wasn't a good match and they apparently engaged in drunken brawls. Jane, her driver, Ronnie Harrison, Sam Brody and her three children from her marriage to Mickey Hegate set off from Biloxi, Mississippi in a 1966 Buick Electra car. They had just left the club and were heading to New Orleans because Jane was scheduled to give a television interview the next morning. Just before 2.30 a.m. on the 29th of June 1967, the car travelled along US Highway 90, Chef Menchure Highway, in Slidell, Louisiana, two miles east of the Fort Pike Bridge, also known as the Rigolettes Bridge. A truck ahead was spraying anti-mosquito spray that caused a heavy fog on the highway. A tractor trailer in front of Jane's car slowed down and Jane's car hit the trailer from behind and actually went underneath it. Jane, Ronnie and Sam, who were sitting in the front of the vehicle, were all killed instantly. Jane's three children who were asleep in the back seat survived with minor injuries. Jane had four chihuahuas with her in the car. Two golden fawn chihuahuas named Precious Jewel and Emerald died. The other two dogs, Dorothy and Cow, survived. Why did she call one of them Cow? The others have nice names. There were rumours that her head had been cut off, but this is untrue. Photos of the car crash show a mass of blonde hair but this is thought to have been a wig. Her autopsy report stated she died from injuries suffered from a crushed skull. After this accident, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration made a rule that truck trailers had to be equipped with a dot bar, which is a red striped steel bar that hangs down to prevent cars from going underneath the vehicles. It is also known as the Mansfield bar. Here she is with actor Stephen Cochran on the left and Ed Wynn, the owner of the Harwin Club in New York where the photo was taken. Legend has it Jane was interested in devil worship and got involved with the founder of the Church of Satan, Anton LaVey. In a ceremony, Anton made Jane high priestess of his church. 
Sam Brodie made fun of Anton's church and would touch objects he was told not to touch. This caused Anton to announce that Sam now had a curse on him and that he would die within a year. The car crash happened within that time frame. She was known for staging publicity stunts, so did she just hang out with Anton because he was a controversial figure to get her picture in the papers? Mickey Haggerty was the only ex-husband to attend Jane's funeral. Jane's eldest daughter, Jane Marie Mansfield, had told police two weeks before Jane's death that Sam Brodie had hit her and so her great uncle had been given temporary custody of her. She was 16 years old at the time and married in 1970, so she would have been 19 or 20 when she got married. She worked as an actress and a model. This isn't Sam, this is Mickey, by the way. Mickey got custody of their three children Mickey Haggerty Jr. went into acting. He was eight years old at the time of his mother's death. Zoltan Haggerty was an actor. He was six years old when Jane died. Mariska Haggerty is the best known, having landed a role in the NBC drama Law and Order Special Victims Unit. She was only three years old when Jane died. Matt Kimber and his third wife, dress designer Christy Hilliard, Hannock raised Tony, Jane's fifth child, who was only one year old when his mother died. He became an actor and a director. Ringo Starr of the Beatles owned the Pink Palace. And singer Ingelbert Humperdinck did as well. He sold the house in 2002 and it was demolished at the end of that year. Jane was buried in Fairview Cemetery, South Main Street, Penn Argyle, Pennsylvania. There is a cenotaph dedicated to her in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood too. Poor Jane, she was so beautiful wasn't she? It was so awful leaving behind five children. If you like this video please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.